Hello and welcome to the latest edition of Central Coast Newspapers Video News. Uh, from sporting champion to community champion, we're joined today by the member for Gosford, Ms. Liesl Tesh. Welcome, Liesl. Thank you so very much for joining us. Thanks very much, Jackie. It's a pleasure. So you were elected in April. April 9th. How have the first eight months been for you? It's an absolute honour, sort of crazy privilege, and it's super busy, and I love it. I absolutely love it. And you really don't know what your job is. Every single day is a new facet of solving people's problems, finding out solutions, dealing with what's going on in the community, and there's always something new. Like, it's absolutely wonderful. And I'm meeting people and going to functions. Before I'd have to teach in the day and go off to community functions in the afternoon. Now, that's part of my diary, which is really a wonderful way to really attach to and be involved in the community. So, was it... Was it just like um, a, a continuum then? It hasn't really been um, an incredible... In terms of the workload, you were busy anyway, so you seem to have been able to adapt to oh, the busyness of being a local member. Absolutely, it really isn't too much different the time I'm spending out and about in the co in the community or on the, on the sporting program and school and the teaching and the after-school responsibilities of teaching. It's just changed shape, and I think I've got a lot more commitment to thinking about what's going on. So the sleep's decreased as the people of Gosford pop into my head at two o'clock in the morning, or like, oh, I'm not out on now, but that's the reality of this job. It's a huge responsibility, and sometimes it's almost frightening that I have this responsibility of looking after our community. You've got quite a diverse electorate too. You've got um, the Gosford CBD, which is supposedly the, the capital of the coast. You've got small coastal villages, and then you've got the, the plateau. Um, do you find sometimes that the priorities of your elected are, electorate are sort of conflicted and competing or...? But not so much com competing, but just understanding the very diverse needs of the electorate. I mean, the people of Spencer have got different needs and up on the mountains to the people of the peninsula and then meeting with the kids from East Gosford Public School for their sports presentation. I mean, what a joy. And having the conversations with parents and teachers all over the electorate, finding out what's going on at grassroots level. So, fr from conversations I've had with you since your election, um, you're a geography teacher and education and environment are very important to you. How do they translate into a new role? How do those passions, I suppose, it translate? It was interesting because when I put my hand up to take on this position, when I to read and run for the candidate, I, I took legal advice and said you have to take leave without pay for your teaching and then you have to give up, you have to resign from your position, 25 years as a teacher, which for the first three days is can I, can't I? And then as I got into the campaigning, I realised I'm continuing the relationship with the students who and their families who know what I stand for, know what my values are, mm -hmm. and are also really prepared to come to me for that. But I think also as a geographer, a lot of our vice chancellors at our universities around Australia are geographers because it's it's the, it's the natural environment, it's the people, it's the economic overlay, it's historic overlay over the top of that. And the long-term consequences of what we're doing in our communities, the sociology of the communities, that is part of a geography, a double major in geography. So, which almost took me into the path of town planning before I diverted into teaching. So that bit of experience in my pocket's also been quite useful, especially when it comes to the developments that are going on around the community. Mm -hmm. So you, you've come into um, the, the final two years of, of a state government um, and I'm just curious to know within the electorate of Gosford what your uh, biggest priorities are, what, what the projects well, are. Well, I think that you're the, the loudest voice of the community at this point in time is the dredging. And the impact really? that's having on the community, on the fishers, on the shops around Edelong and the people who are then commuting to the school kids that are going over and the parents that are picking those kids up, the tourists and the tourist dollar lost coming in, the people that use the ferry for work to get to work on the northern beaches. And now I'm having the voices from Hardy's Bay who are coming to me without response, the yacht clubs now a huge voice on the income they're losing with people going out to race against other yacht clubs and also people who are coming into the yacht club to race and also just to sit at our yacht club and have lunch. So the impact of that dredging is really like the tendrils of that go across our community and I think my fear is that the, the ferry won't be able to operate in summer and it's already not operating 
in rough seas or in high tides and the economic impact on our community of those tourist dollars is so important for us. So what's the solution and why is it not happening? So at the moment there's money now being offered by the state government to the council. So the council has to make that commitment. That's been a long time coming. We've had two lots of $160,000 emergency dredging, mm -hmm. the first of which the ferry hit the bottom two days afterwards, so that wasn't satisfactory. And I've been looking very closely as a bit of a sailor. I went out after the second lot. The keel of our daggy old boat hit the bottom on the way out, I think three days after the last lot of dredging was completed. So I've now got a petition. I've, put, I've tabled 500 signatures. I ran around like a mad chook so that could get into that because I really thought something was going to happen before now. Mm -hmm. And that petition will continue, but hopefully we'll get a solution to this dredging before the summer so our tourist money keeps rolling in. So the argument about... Um it's not the state government's responsibility, it's not the council's responsibility. Where do you sit on that? Whose well, responsibility well, is it? Well, now the council the council has offered 50% of that money, and I'd like to see the council... I mean, the state government, rather, has take, offered to pay 50% of that. I'd like to see the council take that up. And if the council's not prepared to take that up, the state government has to take responsibility, as they have in other waterways up and down the coast. But the big issue is we need a long-term solution. This is a bickering argument that's going on and on. Our waterways are continuing to change. Do we need a groin, a wall that goes out there, which would upset our beach users because they want to surf the box? Or do we buy a dredge? Tuggera Lakes, we've got a dredge sitting up there that does the job continually. Let's get a dredge that's appropriate to here that we can use whenever we need it. OK, what's your second most important issue then if, if the dredge in the channel is reversed? Oh, that's a big one. There's two big ones that are sort of starting to have a voice, and that's palliative care, our ageing population. We finally got a last minute round table in palliative care here on the central coast, but a lot of our key players weren't invited, unfortunately, by the government to that round table. We've got a group called Elsie's Retreat that have been doing a lot of work about developing a standalone palliative care unit. It's a really important resource for our community, so people, especially with the voluntary assisted dying bill not in place, we're having people age in population, but also people with terminal illnesses, and to have a lovely place to die is a really important thing that we lack in our community. So what you're looking for then is a dedicated facility? At the moment we're pressuring the government to even get beds in the local hospital that are palliative care beds. We've got five down at Woi Woi, none in Wild, none in Gosford. So where do you go on the coast if you need palliation? You've got to, you, there's facilities at Woi Woi if there's beds available, but then the doctors have to put their patients in hospital under a guise of something else to have that support. So we need somewhere where families can be supported, where patients are supported that's safe. So initially pushing for beds in the hospital as it's developed, but the long-term solution is a standalone. We can't have bed creep getting those beds taken away and used for other things where people can go and die and also their families are supported. So a standalone palliative care unit would provide a space for people to come in for a few days to get their medications, to maybe have some respite for families, and then maybe go home to die. But we just don't have that gentle framework around looking after people like my own mother in those last days mm. of her life. Mm. All right, well, they're, they're two pretty big issues. And Do you want to give me a third? <laughs> Absolutely, another one. And I'm hosting a youth leadership forum as an identified need for more mental health support for our young people on the coast. So at the moment we have zero adolescent beds in our hospitals for young people with mental health needs, so they have to be shipped to Hornsby, Sydney or Newcastle. Is that the case in other regions? No. So we've got beds in other regions, so we're putting a call to the state government to demand that we've got at least, I don't even know how many beds we need, but I know that youth mental health on the coast is in dire need of additional support, and I know we've got great NGOs doing everything we can, but we're obviously not reaching out and delivering the tendrils of support that we need to do as family structures change, staff at schools take on a bigger role in mental health support and welfare and also this youth leadership is delivering support structures to friends so friends can then help their friends reach out to professionals in times of need. Wow, I'm, I did not realise that we didn't have any dedicated mm, youth Yeah, so there's health. been a few questions to government on a few of those issues, youth mental health beds, palliative care, but also how much money does the government earn from our Brisbane water and we have yet to receive an answer to that. They denied an answer so I've broken that question up in a very clear step so they deliver exactly how much income we need to take responsibility for, for that beautiful Brisbane water. Okay, one final question because I've, I've seen you in this context too and I'm, I'm interested in, in 
um, letting our viewers know about that connection. You have a very strong connection, I think, through your students at, at Brisbane Water Secondary College with the local Aboriginal community. Um, a, as the local member, how does that translate? I think the community... I've taught Aboriginal studies at Brisbane Water Secondary College for 10 years, so it takes a long time to develop that beautiful trust relationship and friendship that I now have with members of our Aboriginal community. So they know exactly what I stand for, like the students, but they also know that I've got a deep understanding of Aboriginal issues and concerns that I'll stand up for our Aboriginal community and their culture and traditions, and what we have to try and strengthen our community and deliver everything we can to make our Aboriginal people, like I always say, walking beside our Aboriginal people, young people as strength into the future while supporting our elders who are really doing their best to look after the arms under their wings. It's of utmost importance. And I think when Australia is ready for that, we will become a better nation. Thank you, Hazel. Lovely to speak with you. Thank, Thank you very much. Time. Woohoo! <laughs> That's Nine a wrap. Minutes. Okay, that was.